Hi, welcome. I'm Melissa and thank you for joining me. Today's video is going to be all about my top five common houseplants. Not only are they common, but they're just some of my absolute favorite plants. I feel like my collection would not be complete without these plants. They're just some of my tried and true. And yeah, I just love them so much. So I'm happy to share them with you today. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up for me. And we're gonna get started with our first one. Up first is a Maranta. And not only a Maranta, but this is a Maranta Lucanura Lemon Lime. This is only one of my Maranta lemon limes. I actually have four. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a peek at all four of them in clips while I'm talking about this plant. This one actually is my tried and true Maranta. This is the exact same plant that started my Maranta obsession. If you haven't watched me before or don't know anything about me, I love Maranta. Some people call me the Maranta queen. <laughs> I have a lot of different species and varieties and I do want more. There's some more that I don't have that I do want in my collection. My goal was to collect them all. But this one is very, very common. Uh, you can find these pretty easily here. I feel like, uh, yeah, I can go and just pick this up today if I wanted. Funny story is that every single one of these plants I'm gonna show you today, I did get at a big box store, specifically Lowe's. <laughs> Uh, so that's how common they are and some of these plants i've had for years and they were still like common back then marantas sometimes get a bad rap but they just really seem to do well with me and i adore them i feel like uh, marantas are definitely one of my top favorite uh, plant species they're part of the marantasia family and i just adore them <laughs> the lemon lime is special because I feel like it's just a classic, vibrant green color. The leaves are so striking. The pattern can be different on the leaves too. Not every leaf looks the same. I know from far away, it looks like the leaves are the same pattern, but they really aren't. They're just so unique and they're just so beautiful. This Maranta specifically, uh, like I was saying, started my Maranta obsession. I got this Maranta during the 2020 uh, holiday season. So I've had this Maranta almost three years. It had a little bit of a setback this year, a little sad about that. Uh, it caught a... Uh, issue with flat mites and after I moved last year actually it got sad and then I kind of rehabbed it back and then it caught flat mites and then I rehabbed it back and most recently uh, I transitioned this one to pawn. Uh, pawn is a different type of substrate. It's a soilless substrate that you can grow plants in and specifically lechuza the pawn. It's pretty new to me, but I'm obsessed with it. I've always grown in soil, but Pawn has been absolutely amazing and the plants are thriving in it, the plants that I've transferred to it. And this Maranta has taken off since transitioning to Pawn. It's only been in Pawn for a month, I would say, which is sort of crazy and look at it. It is beautiful. My bathroom Maranta is definitely a special Maranta. It's gotten huge. I got that one at a big box store as well. And it lives in my bathroom where it's really humid and it's warm in there. It's next to a window so it gets some good light throughout the day. And it just, I got it last year and it has like quadrupled in size. <laughs> and it's just such a special Maranta. I love it. I also have two more lemon lime Marantas that I got locally as well because again I'm obsessed with Maranta and they're just as happy as can be. I love all four of my lemon limes. <laughs> I do have many other Maranta varieties but I really just wanted to point out the lemon lime for this video because Again, it's just special and very common. I see these all the time at like my hardware stores, my like Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, you can buy them in pretty big hanging baskets nowadays. You can buy them as a small plant. They flower. This one actually has a bloom right here. <laughs> 
uh, mind flower all the time. So Maranta Lemon Lime, I just, again, cannot live without this plant in my collection. If you take away my Maranta Lemon Limes, I would be so sad right now. Uh, so definitely one of my top favorite common plants. Next up, I wanted to feature an alocasia for a common top favorite plant because I feel like they're pretty common to find at your local store. Specifically, this one is a alocasia black velvet, and I have gotten this one at a big box store. I think the black velvet is such a classic alocasia. I can find these pretty easily in my area. I feel like if it's not the black velvet, it's the Alocasia Maharani that I see often or the Alocasia Silver Dragon. So one of those three varieties, I feel like you could easily get your hands on. My black velvet I've had for a while. It's another plant that I have a transition to pawn and it absolutely loves it. It's one that I've kind of struggled to grow, but ever since I've transitioned it to pond in a soilless medium, it seems a lot happier. I definitely love Alocasius too, another one of my top favorite plant genuses. <laughs> I've always loved the black velvet because of the cool black texture. It just is so beautiful. The dark tone, I really don't have a plant leaf that's this dark. And the veining is just so cool. It's hard to see the texture on this plant. This one is not the original black velvet that I had back in the day. Uh, that one didn't make it. I probably could have saved it knowing what I know now. This one I've had since probably 2021, I would say. My first one I got in 2020 as well. 2020 was like the year I was really getting into house plants, the beginning of the year. And I definitely fell in love with this plant and everything about it. They are known to be a little bit of a picky plant species uh, genus because uh, they tend to only maintain a couple leaves. They lose a leaf, grow a leaf, and there's a lot of factors that go into that as far as like the environment and the care and the light. I feel like a lot of people consider this like a classic common plant, alocasia, and a lot of people probably have this one in their collection but I feel like it's just an OG and I love it and definitely one of my top favorite common plants. Next up, we are gonna talk about my favorite Calathea of all times. <laughs> I know I did feature a Maranta in this video, but Calatheas are a different species. They both fall under the Marantasia family. But again, if I were to go to my local big box store, I should be able to find this plant pretty easily. I find them popping up all the time here. And every time I see them, it's hard not to get a second one or want a second one. <laughs> uh, I love Calatheas as well. Um, I have several Calatheas in my collection and I adore them. I find this one to be an easier one if you do want to dive into Calatheas. They are uh, very finicky <laughs> for a lot of people. They can be temperamental. I feel like Calatheas like me and um, I love them as well. So I just can't help but love them. <laughs> uh, let me show you this one because she has outdone herself. Look at this huge Calathea. This is a Makoyana and I just adore her. She is so happy. How could you not love this plant? She's gorgeous. She is so big, so full. I have her in an eight inch planter. She has bloomed for me several times. Uh, this one has been a very, very happy Calathea. She does have a funny backstory. I've had this Calathea for a long time. Again, it was one of my first uh, Calatheas that I purchased. This is the exact same plant. <laughs> I purchased it in 2020 at my local big box store back in the day. I didn't really know what I was getting into with Calatheas and um, it did well, but then it caught spider mites. And again, it was a time where I didn't really know what spider mites were and it kind of took over the plant. I ended up like cutting, after doing research, I cut all the leaves back, which knowing what I know now, I probably wouldn't have done that, but the infection was pretty bad on it. And I decided to chop it back. It went dormant because this was like in winter time. And so I rehabbed it. I had a tiny old greenhouse back in the day. I had it in there for like six months and it finally, finally started growing. <laughs> Uh, seeing those little leaves come up out of the soil. I'm like, oh my gosh, is this plant coming back? I just didn't want to like toss it and give up on it. I probably could have bought another one, but 
I don't know, I'm someone who doesn't like to toss plants away if they die back. I'd rather just keep them as a pile of dirt and just see what they do. A lot of the times they just go dormant and their rhizomes under the soil, they're still very viable and they'll grow new shoots in some time. So that's why I just like to keep them because you never know. Because if I would have tossed that pile of dirt, I wouldn't have this gorgeous plant right now. And that that right there alone gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, she's one of my favorite plants in my collection, most definitely. And I adore this plant and I just, she brings me so much happiness. I do see this Calathea all the time, as well as like the Calathea rosa picta or any of those in that family, like Calathea dotty. Those are very common Calatheas in my area. So I do love them. But the Makoiana is definitely one of my OG Calatheas. And again, it's a plant that I cannot not have in my collection. If something were to happen to her, I would be very sad and I would probably go out and buy another Calathea like this one immediately. <laughs> so yeah, Calathea Makoiana, I love her. The next plant I'm gonna show you is one of my top, 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 tippy top favorite common plants. <laughs> this hands down is another plant that I absolutely cannot not have in my collection. I would cry right now probably if this plant disappeared. Every time I come in my plant room, I'm looking at this plant. My eyes immediately go to this plant. I say hi to this plant every morning. <laughs> I just, I love her. This plant is a Marvel Queen Pothos. Many of you know it as. It's actually an Epipremnum Arium Marvel Queen. And it's one of those plants that is just all around one of the best plants that you can have in your collection. Epipremnum is like a vining plant. They love climbing and Many of you have them in a trailing basket. The thing that I love most about them is just the variegation. A lot of variegated plants are more rare and more expensive. So to have variegation like that in a common plant, I feel like is so unique. And the variegation is stunning. As common as a Marble Queen is, she's one of my top favorite plants of all time, not just common and I can't live without this plant. Uh, many of you know my impressive, huge Marble Queen that I have climbing up a moss pole. This is a Marble Queen that you can go get right now at your local big box store. And these leaves are insane. The size of these leaves are incredible when they are climbing up on a pole. And the variegation, like look at that variegation. You cannot beat that variegation for a plant that's like five bucks in a small basket that you can eventually do the same thing with. It's just incredible, uh, the plant, and it's amazing when it actually climbs up on a pole. She just means everything to me, and I can't wait to see her climb even more than what she has done already. I'm in a new location. <laughs> I just wanted to share it. So this Marvel Queen, this one here, is the exact same plant that I started my pole from, this here, and she's gorgeous. This is my OG Marble Queen that I got at my local Lowe's. She has been repotted since. She's in an eight inch pot. And I have some strands that are very light. Um, I could have some Snow Queen mixed in here, it's hard to say, but the trailing basket, to compare these leaves side by side is unreal. Uh, the size difference, we're talking like, a 14 inch leaf compared to like a three inch leaf. It's crazy. <laughs> Again, just a classic plant. The color, the everything is just so beautiful. <laughs> you definitely have to have a Marvel Queen in your collection. I did buy another one uh, last month, most recently, uh, <laughs> because you know, sometimes I'm at the big box store and I see a plant and then I don't buy it and I regret it. Even though I already have it, I don't know why I got it. I guess because it just spoke to me. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I don't know why I make some of the purchases I do, but I guess because I love Marble Queen so much, it just goes to show you when I have multiples of the same plant, I just, yeah, I just, I have to have multiples. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so yeah, one of my favorite plants of all time, Ever Primitive Marble Queen, so easy going, not finicky, uh, tolerates many different light levels, many different environments, watering. They're not pest magnets. Honestly, you cannot go wrong with a Marble Queen. If anyone asks me a type of plant that they recommend, 
Uh, I always say a Marvel queen if they don't have it because yeah, it's just literally, you got the best of everything with the Marble Queen. You honestly do. If you do not have this plant in your collection, after watching this video, I want you to go out and get one because you will be obsessed with a Marble Queen. Trust me, you will. Put one on a pole, let it climb, and you will be even more obsessed. <laughs> so definitely one that is one of my absolute top favorites. And yeah, just a must have. We are outside now for the last plant I'm gonna show you. Again, it's very common. You can find these anywhere. I would say no matter where you are, I feel like this plant anyone would be able to get. It's one that truly started my plant obsession. Back in the day, it made me fall in love with this plant genus and it is now my favorite plant genus. And yeah, again, just a tried and true classic. One that I absolutely have to have in my collection because it's just, it's just one of those plants that it's just a classic plant and I just feel like everyone has to have it and they're just so special. I don't know. I can't describe how special they are. I actually have four, <laughs> four of these ones. Um, three are actually outside here and one is a small one that's like a water prop. But yeah, the three that are outside here will be coming in probably within a month because we are into the fall season. So the plants that are out here will be making their way back in. <laughs> so yeah, the plant that I am referring to is a none other Monstera Deliciosa, just a regular green form. So let me show you mine and why I love them so much. I mean, these plant leaves are just absolutely incredible. This is one of the newer leaves. This uh, Deliciosa here is my OG. She's been outside all summer here and she's gotten some pretty big leaves. There's actually a new one coming in on that side down there. I think new Monstera Deliciosa leaves are so special. This one is definitely still hardening, but some of these leaves that have grown outside are pretty big. Like, again, my hand compared to this leaf is pretty insane. So my OG Monstera, I just absolutely adore. She's been in my collection for a while. Um, I did start her from propagations uh, back in the day, and yeah, she's finally like enjoying life and is growing so well being outside. I have another Deliciosa here in the front. Uh, that one I'm not sure what I want to do with. My other Deliciosa is over here in the corner and again it's another one that has some pretty large leaves. This one was a rehab at a big box store. I couldn't pass it up. It was just in such bad shape and I brought it back to life. Monstera Deliciosas do really appreciate a lot of light and it is pretty shaded here on my patio area. So although they do get um, good light, it's just not as, not as probably ideal as they would want to make them grow faster, if that makes sense. See, so yeah, I absolutely adore Monstera Deliciosa, just such a tried and true classic plant and really just jumpstart my love for plants and Monstera. And I've branched out and have collected more rare forms of Monstera Deliciosa, like the Aria, the Albo, and I now have a mint, which is so tiny, <laughs> um, but I can't wait for it to get to be the size of of these ones day. Oh, the tie as well. I have the tie. <laughs> so obviously I love Monstera and yeah, they're just, my collection would not be complete without a Monstera Deliciosa. That is it for my top five favorite common plants. Let me know your favorite common plant down below if you have another one that you like that's common that you can't live without. I'm actually curious to know what your favorite is. So I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you guys again soon.